So today we're just going to look at some more equations that involve exponential expressions and logs and things and, and, and be surprised at what kind of clever problems we can, we can get the answers to. All right. So this, I can tell you what I'm tempted to do. I'm tempted to get all the things with x in it on one side and all the things without x on it, in it on another. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides to do that. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to subtract e to the x minus 2 from both sides. If I do that, then on the left, I have e to the x plus 1 minus e to the x minus 2 equals 5. OK. Um, on the left, I see two terms with x. I'm tempted to try and take the ln. The problem is, if I have this, the ln of a minus b, there's no rule that kind of helps me out with that. All right, people are tempted sometimes to think, oh, I can distribute that ln and make it ln of a minus ln of b. But that's not true, because the ln of a minus the ln of b equals the ln of a divided by b. And that's not what we had in our equation. So in other words, if I take the ln of this thing on the left here, I'm just going to look like ln of a minus b. And that's not going to help me. However, what I do notice is um, I, I can. I think there's a common factor here that has an x in it. So I'm going to rewrite this in a careful way. And you have to decide that you agree with this. So we're going to take this thing on the, on the left here. I'm going to rewrite it like this. e to the x times e to the 1 minus e to the x times e to the negative 2 equals 5. Now you should take a moment to convince yourself that that is true. OK? Um, the answer is it is true. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you here. And here's why. A long time ago, you learned to do things like this, x to the a times x to the b power. And when you did that problem, you knew that you could add the exponents because the bases were the same. That was a rule you learned. And again, here we go. You can go this direction, or you've been going that direction most of your mathematical lives, but you can always go backwards. Okay. So if you check this, if you look at this first term here, e to the x times e to the 1 would be e to the x plus 1, which is this. So that works. And then e to the x times e to the negative 2 would be e to the x minus 2 when you added those exponents. So this really is the same equation. OK? So now, my claim is, if you look at this equation, there's a common factor on the left. So if we look on the left, the common factor that's there is e to the x. So you take out e to the x, and to get the first term here, you need e to the 1. And to get the second term, you need minus e to the negative 2 equals 5. Okay. And here's where things, here's where you're going to just be a little comfortable with things not looking so nice. When you look at what's left here, after factoring out e to the x, you get this expression. That expression is just a number. That's all it is. Right? E is like 2.7 something. We've discussed that. So this is about 2.7 minus 1 over about 2.7 squared. It's some kind of number. I don't want it there. I'm going to divide by it. So I'm going to get e to the x equals 5 over e um, minus, you can write e to the negative 2. You can write 1 over e squared if you like. Whatever. Okay. Now that expression on the right is just a number. If I want to know what it is as a decimal, I could type it in my calculator, hit diamond equals. But I don't need to. Um, now, on the left, I have a variable in the exponent. So we've learned that it's nice to take the log, right? Because the log rule says that if you have a log of a to the c power, it's c times the log of a. All right? Well, that also works for ln. So ln of a to the c power is um, c times the ln of a. All right? So maybe you'll take the ln of both sides, because something very nice happens if you do that. The ln of e to the x equals the ln of this expression. Oops, my bad here. e minus 1 over e squared. And then ln of e to the x, you can think of two ways. You can say, oh, that's x ln e. And then ask yourself what ln of e is. But you know that that's 1. That's saying, what power do you put on the e to get e? So that's 1. So this is just x. Or you can recall that rule we talked about. We said that the ln of e to the, to the triangle is just triangle. It's really a silly question. 
It's saying what power do you put on e to get e to the x? That's just x. So this turns out to be x equals the ln of 5 over e, 1 minus e squared. So if you wanted to, you could take this a step further. Since this is division, you could write, if you wanted to, x equals the ln of 5 minus the ln of e minus 1 over e squared. Okay? And it looks so tempting to try and take the ln of e over here on the right. Okay? But you can't do anything with this because you don't have any rules for the ln of a difference of things. All right? So you're kind of stuck just like that. All right. So it's not obvious at first what to do here. I would like it if this 9 to the x here was instead like a 3 to the x. Then at least it be might some kind of com common factor maybe or something I could do with that. Um, so let's see what we can do. I claim we can rewrite this. We can think of this as like 3 squared to the x. Minus 7 times 3 to the x um, equals negative 6. All right, so if you take a look at that for a minute, um, that's certainly true, right? Because in this situation, um, 3 squared is 9. 9 to the x is just that up there. All right, um, what I notice is that didn't work out, though. I don't have a common factor that I can take out, OK? But I know I have an option. I can also write the following. 3 to the x squared. Now let's convince ourselves for a moment that that's really the same thing. You know it is because in this situation, you'd multiply exponents. And in this situation, you multiply by exponents. In either case, you'd get 2 times x. So I didn't change the value of this expression at all. OK. Now, here's where the problem occurs. Let me show you what you can try and do. We said we were going to hope for a common factor. Let's take out the common factor of 3dx and see what happens. 3dx comes on the outside. You need to ask yourself what you need inside to get this expression back. This needs to be 3 to the x minus 7 would do it, equals negative 6. And unfortunately, this is not like the last problem. Let's just go back and look at the last problem for a minute and come back to this. And the last question. We factored out e to the x, and the expression we had left was just a number. Not a pleasant looking number, but a number. So I could divide by it. That didn't happen here. Because the expression I have left now, this expression, still has an x in it. So if I divide by it, right, I'm going to end up with uh, 3 to the x equals something with x. I'm going to have x on both sides, and that's not what I really want. So I actually have to look at this problem in a different way. I'm going to go back to that previous step. This previous step, I'm going to, this was a dead end. This doesn't work. I'll put a big x through that. Didn't do the job. 3 to the x quantity squared minus 7 times 3 to the x. And while I'm at it, I'm going to bring that 6 over. Plus 6 equals 0. And my claim is, if you look at this equation carefully, it actually is in the form of, an, of a form of a style of equation that you've seen many times. It looks like this, AX, um, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. With this small difference, instead of x being squared, we have 3 to the x being squared. Instead of just having b times x, we have b times 3 to the x. So you can tell here is that x has been replaced with 3 to the x, but it's still really a quadratic equation. So um, we can do this. Ready? I'm going to write this um, the following way. I'm going to say, hey, let some number a equal 3 to the x. And I'm doing that to make a substitution, because this equation now becomes, if I take these two facts together, I get a squared minus 7 times a plus 6 equals 0. Okay? And that I can factor and solve. It's an easy problem. a minus 6, a minus 1 equals 0, and that's because negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6, and negative 1 plus uh, negative 6 is negative 7. Okay? Well, that means that a equals 6 or 1. But remember, we're not solving for a. We're solving for x. So we can change this into small equations. 3 to the x equals 6, 
or 3 to the x equals 1. All right. Um, so one of these is actually, you could just look at by inspection. 3 to some power is 1. x must be 0. You know that automatically. So that's one answer. Over here, you don't know what power to put on 3 to get 6. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. Log 3 to the x equals log of 6. <coughs> Bring the x down in front, so I get x log 3 equals log 6. And that means that x equals the log of 6 over the log of 3. And there you go. You have your two answers. Um, we know this thing here. This, just look at this answer in particular. We know this answer is really the same thing as log base 3 of 6 by change of base formula. Right? Change of base formula says that if you have the log of b over the log of a is the log base a of b. Right? Now, you actually could skip all this algebra if you want just by looking at this equation and thinking about what x needs to do. Right? x is the power we put on 3 to get 6. But we know how to write that as a log. The power we put on 3 to get 6, we write in our math classes as log base 3 of 6. That's the definition of log base 3 of 6. So you actually could go right to the answer when you see one of these things, rather than go through taking log of both sides and bringing the x down and so forth. Okay? All right, let's get, let me give you another one here. Suppose they gave you um, this. I think this will do it. e to the x plus um, 2 over e to the x equals 3. Started with this. So I'm going to multiply through by e to the x. That's a common thing to do whenever you have a fraction in your equation. Multiply through by the common denominator and clear your denominators out. This is the denominator of 1, so there's nothing to worry about there or here. But I will be able to get rid of this e to the x by multiplying every term by e to the x. Okay. So you have options to how you write these things. Like, for example, e to the x times e to the x, you could write as e to the x plus x or e to the 2x. You could do that. Or you could just think of it as, well, I'm doing something times itself. So I can write e to the x squared, because that's what I'm really doing. I'm doing e to the x times e to the x. Over here, I get plus 2. And on this side, I get plus, oh, I'm sorry, equals 3e e to the x. OK. There is a reason why I left this first term the way I did. You'll see in a moment here. Well, that's what I'm going to do now. e to the x squared minus 3 times e to the x plus 2 equals 0. And I hope you realize that this is also in quadratic form, right? You have a variable, e to the x squared minus 3 times that same variable plus a number by itself equals 0. Okay, And it's up to you. If you want to do a substitution, like say, like let a equal e to the x, and then rewrite this as a squared minus 3a plus 2 equals 0, you can do that. Although I was, I'm sure some of you can do it this way. It says, you could think of it this way. You could say, hey, that's just the variable, e to the x. So when I factor it, it's going to be e to the x in this position, and e to the x also in that position, because e to the x times e to the x, these two guys, would give you e to the x squared. Right? And then what numbers multiply to 2 and add to negative 3? Minus 2 and minus 1 do that. Equals 0. Okay? Do that will go back to what you were saying. So now what do you know? Well, you know e to the x equals 2, and you know e to the x equals 1. And again, by inspection, x must be 0 here. Here, I think um, if you want, you could just think, oh, well, let's write this in log form. This is really saying log base e of 2 equals x. That's what that's really saying. Or we don't usually write it that way. We write ln of 2 equals x. All right. If you're not comfortable doing that way, then what you really should be doing is this. You'd, whenever you see e to the x equals 2, you want to take advantage of this fact. And we showed this many times. The ln of e to the triangle is just triangle. Take advantage of that. So anytime you have e to a power, take the ln of both sides. You get the ln of e to the x 
equals the ln of 2. But according to this rule here, we get just x equals the ln of 2. So you get the same answer. It's not going to matter. All right? Okay. Um, going back to this original equation, I think it's possible we could have started it in a different way. So let's look at that. Ready? So it's e to the x plus 2 over e to the x equals 3. We could have um, maybe done this. 2 over e to the x equals 3 minus e to the x. So you can do the following. Right? And this, if you did it this way, you might be tempted to cross multiply. Finish this off. Let's see. So put this over 1, cross multiply, you'll get 2 equals um, e to the x times 3 minus e to the x. So we can write that as 2 equals 3e to the x minus e to the x quantity squared. Because it's e to the x times e to the x. So that's what you have. All right. Well, with a little bit of work, it looks just like the other equation. Bring these two things to the left. And if you do that, you'll get e to the x squared minus 3 e to the x plus 2 equals 0. If you had decided instead to bring the 2 over to the right side, you can do that. But then you really need to multiply through by negative 1 so that you can factor a little more easily. You don't have to, but it would be nice. Let's look at one more problem. Um, can't promise this is going to be a quadratic or anything, but let's look and see what we see here. The ln of e to the 4x plus 3 over e equals 1. So here's a problem that looks scary. Give that a shot. So there's a couple ways to think of this. One thing you could think of is, is the following. You could say, I'm taking the ln of some quantity, and I'm getting 1 as an answer. So if you look at the basic form of this, the basic form of this is the ln of some mystery number equals 1, right? That's really the same thing as saying the log base e of some mystery number is 1. So this mystery number must have been e, right? Because log base e of e is saying, what power do you put in e to get e? And you'd get 1. So if you can have that realization to start. Um, and what would you end up with? Well, you'd get e to the 4x plus 3 over e must be equal to e. Okay, so we can cross multiply now. We'll get e squared equals e to the 4x plus, plus 3. 3 is not part of the exponent. Just be careful there. Um, and now it's just a normal equation. Subtract 3, subtract 3. You get e squared minus 3 equals e to the 4x. This thing on the left here is just a number, so don't let that bother you. I'm going to take the ln of both sides. ln of e squared minus 3 equals the ln of e to the 4x. But on the right here, you're really just getting 4x, because the ln of e to the triangle is just triangle. OK, great. So you're done. You have 4x equals the ln of e squared minus 3. That means x must be the ln of e squared minus 3 over 4.